Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, we're going to be building a large structure for this area right here. The kit is from Fosscale Models and is called the Metzger Building. This is going to be a big project. <laughs> but hey, before we get started, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos. All right, well, like always, we have a lot to do, so let's get to it. Okay, well, as you can see, I've already got a head start on this and all of the walls are braced. Now, the bracing was all done using the template provided in the kit. Now, it's important to note that there is a trim that goes on the top of the walls. So the bracing has to extend up to allow for that trim. And it's all in the instructions. So I first recommend reading through the instructions at least twice. Um, there are some great colored photos provided for reference. And there's more color photos um, on the website. And they provide you with a part sheet, um, templates for doing the uh, framing for the billboard that goes up on the roof. There's actually two signs. And then here are the colored signs. It's really a beautiful kit. Okay, so like I mentioned, all of the walls are braced. Now I will flip them over and... I'm probably going to take my knife and lift some of the boards and possibly break some of them just to give it a, an aged weathered look. I'll show you in the photos. Hopefully you can see that where some of the boards are lifted and some are actually broken away. So I'll go through and do that to the walls and then we'll come back and stain them all and I will be staining the walls with murky brown and that is from besttrains.com now when you're lifting some of the boards you may want to take an extra piece of the bracing which is an eighth of an inch thick and just simply put it under to give it some support And just put your blade under one of the boards and lift it up. So I'm barely dipping the brush in the stain. You want to go really thin, really thin to prevent warping. You can always go back after it dries and do another thin coat to darken it if you want. It doesn't have to be an even coat. Just brush over it quick. I wanted to point out that I put some stain on the back side of the walls, just on the three big ones, just because they were starting to curl a little bit. Just They were bowing slightly, so I just put some on the back um, and that kind of corrects it. All right, we'll let these dry and then we'll come back and paint them the wall color. And we're gonna use chalk paint. I'm using Parisian gray. And then all of the trim and windows will be white. Well, our walls are completely dry. And let me share with you a quick story on these walls. So I stained these on a Friday and I put a thin layer, but because of the size of these walls, they bowed, um, not bad, but they just were curved, all of these. So 
I put some stain on the back of the wall. And even after applying it to the back of the wall, I could tell that they were still bowed. Well, uh, over the weekend, I had no time to do any modeling. So these have sat for two days. It's now Monday, and these walls are completely flat. So sometimes it just takes time to let things completely dry um, I know a lot of times I'll get in a hurry because I'm inspired to build and you know uh, they're bowed um, I'll put stain maybe on the back of the wall thinking that it will correct it and it does a little bit but I just keep going with the build um, hoping that eventually they will straighten out um, but the best thing to do is to walk away walk away and let things completely dry before you move on to the next and, and there's other things um, you know while you're waiting for walls to dry you can be working on windows or other parts of the kit so patience is key all right let's move on to painting the walls and again we're using Parisian gray and it is a chalk paint. Well, as you can see, the walls are all painted. It took a while, it really did. Uh, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. Okay, next we need to do a couple things. I need to stain all of the strip wood that is provided in the kit. And I'm gonna spray a gray primer on all of the doors and windows. That's a lot. <laughs> okay, they are all primed. Now I'm going to paint them to match our stained wood. We're using Fawn and raw umber. And we'll grab some of our sticks. It doesn't have to match exact. Get some water. We could even add a little bit of burnt sienna. Add a little bit of water to it. So uh, I'm painting the trim and the windows and the uh, freeze board that goes across the top light buttermilk so I've been using a stiff brush just sort of dabbing it on you could do this with a sponge too now let's get some signs put on the walls the first thing we're going to do is cut out the ones we want. Now I'm cutting them bigger because we're going to sand the back of them. Then after it's sanded, we'll, we'll trim it right to the edge of the sign. Now this is going to take a while. <laughs>
Well, as you can see, the walls are glued together. And following the instructions, uh, they say to put it together upside down. So now, we can build the storefront that wraps around. Now we also need to add some bracing back here to put in a roof card right there. So we'll just put some little bracing, a little trim around the opening there and then lay it in. So I just took some 1 8 inch square wood and put some bracing in there for the roof. I'm starting work on the storefronts and they're made up of two pieces. So it really gives you some nice detail. So I'll get these all glued together and then we'll probably put a gray primer on them and then paint them to look like wood and then we'll sponge the white, the light buttermilk over them. Well, it's taken a while, but I've got one wall finished. <laughs> So I've been making some progress. I've got the uh, the lower part done. I still have a few doors to paint and glue on. And as you can see, I've added some signs. This is very easy to build. Uh, you just follow the instructions and they're all the steps are all pre-cut and you just glue them together. Next, I've got all my strips cut for the uh, the rooftop. So we'll get those glued on and I'm gonna use double-sided tape and just cover the top of this with tape and then just stick all those on there okay so I finished the tar paper on the roof and then I also finished the little structures now I don't know if you can see the weathering but it looks kind of like dirt and also maybe like the wood is starting to rot and very easy. Let me quick show you how I do that. We're going to use thinner, and this is an odorless thinner from Ammo. And we're going to use two products from Ammo called oil brushers. And one is earth, and one is dark brown. You know, I'll put a link. Um, in the description below that'll take you directly to Amazon and all you got to do is click on the product and you can have this within a few days and be using exactly what I'm using and we even have an ammo brush this is very very easy Now this color is earth brown. Now we'll just dip our brush in the thinner. And you can just go back and forth till you get the look you want. And it dries really fast because you're using such a thin amount. These last <laughs> for years. Now I'm using dark brown. Very small amount right over the areas where I already put the earth brown. 
Let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, so here's a before and here's after. What's really nice about this is using the thinner, it lets it bleed and gives it a nice, soft, realistic look. Um, it doesn't have a hard edge where if you try doing the same technique with acrylic paint, you're going to get a hard edge and it's not going to have a soft uh, feathered look, which helps make it look realistic. While I've got all this out, why don't I just show you quick what this is going to look like. So again, we'll start with earth brown. Then we'll get thinner on our brush. Again, if you think it's too heavy in one spot, just take the thinner and brush over it. Now we'll take the dark brown. <laughs> I'm sorry, it might not have been on camera when I did that. Let me show you one more time. Dip the brush into thinner. Then we'll take the dark brown. Oops, <laughs> you'll see I made a mistake. That's okay, we'll fix it. I'm dabbing my paintbrush on a paper towel. It still has a little bit of thinner in the brush. And again, if you think it's too heavy in one spot, um, like let's just say right here. Just go over it with the thinner and blend it out. Okay, so I just finished the fire escape. And I put some rust on it, um, did some more rusting around some of these signs, did a little bit of rust running down the side of the building. All of that rust was done with streaking rust effects. And when you use this with the odorless thinner, you get really great results. It really bleeds it into the wood and makes it look like real rust running down and staining the building. Okay, next we'll do some dry brushing and add some pigments to the rooftop. And then we can add our two big signs that go on top. So to dirty up the rooftop, I've been using pigments. Oh, 
Oh, I almost forgot to do this area. Let's quick do that. It doesn't take much at all. A little goes a long way. Okay, now we'll take sand. It's almost white. It's a pigment. Next, we're going to build the two large signs that go up on the rooftop. And in the kit, you get a template. And it shows you. You can lay wax paper over the top of this. Uh, I suggest taping this down to your workbench. Then taping a piece of wax paper over the top of it. Then build your framework. So this part here, this is the back side, but the front is built in layers. And then we cut the sign out, which is right here. We'll cut that out and glue that in the center. Uh, but first we need to weather this. Real quick, while I've got this diagram out here, um, There's how you put the steps together. Very easy. Um, here it shows you a side, a profile shot of the storefront and the pillars. So really, really good instructions in this kit. Okay, the signs are all done. Now we need to build a water tower that sits right here. Okay, the water tower is done. Now let's see what's left. We have a few doors that I still have to paint. And we have an entire bag of detail parts. Uh, we have some lamp posts. Uh, we'll add that later after we get it put on the layout. All right, lots of cool details. Let's get a gray primer sprayed on these and then we'll paint them and get them glued on. All right, well, there it is in place. This was a large project. Uh, this probably took me about two weeks to build this. 
Um, <laughs> and I appreciate all of you so much for joining in and watching this. Uh, uh, you know, a big thank you to, to everyone that watches this channel and to everyone that leaves me a comment. I especially love hearing what country uh, people are living in and viewing this. Um, it's incredible that there's viewers all over the world watching this. Um, I'm honored and humbled that you just take the time to watch my channel. I truly appreciate it. And of course, a big, big thank you to all of my Patreons. This is incredible, um, having this YouTube channel and sharing my passion for this hobby with all of you. Um, it's just, it means so much to me. So thank you. All right. Well, until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.